Hello and welcome to an analytics presentation on weather.com prepared by myself, Krista Myers. For part one of the presentation, we're going to take a look at our target demo. Once we know the demographic, we can determine the best way to segment our audience. Then we'll get into the definitions of segments, cohorts, and personas and see how they apply to weather.com. Then I'll discuss our measurement framework, review our business objective and our goals. And we'll move into KPIs and targets. We'll talk about their definitions and find out why they're important for our site. And finally, we'll revisit our personas to see how each of them would navigate and interact with weather.com. Our target demographic consists mostly of female students between the ages of 20 to 30 who browse weather.com mostly from school. Market segmentation allows us to track a portion of our audience based on geographic, behavioral, seasonal, or benefit segments. So with our site weather.com in mind, we want to segment our users based on their geographic market. Segments are based on geographic market segmentation, and we can derive sub-segments of our target audience based on their gender, age, income, etc. Cohorts are groupings of target audiences based on similar life experiences, so this can be best described as generations, for example, baby boomers. And then finally, personas are people in the target audience with combined attributes that represent a single user. A good example of this would be a hipster. For our segments for weather.com, we want to look at the gender, male and female. We want to look at their age groups, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, and those over 50. Their income, medium, medium to high and high. Marital status, occupation, salary paid professionals versus college students. And we want to look at those that live in warmer climates year-round versus those that live in cooler climates. The cohorts we're interested in tracking are baby boomers those who use apps versus those that don't, Generation X, those that have signed up for active alerts versus those that haven't, and Millennials, those that have embedded their forecast into their personal sites versus those that have not. We also want to make sure we're tracking the overall percentage of registered accounts for each cohort. Meet our personas for weather.com. We have David the Broadcaster. He's a divorced male, 30 to 40. Profession, a media professional in the Midwest. He earns a medium income, types copy, and or broadcasts weather conditions. He's not necessarily a registered user, but he signs up for any breaking weather alerts for his location. Always has the forecast up, refreshes the page two to four times an hour. Next, we have Sarah, the tech savvy college student. She's a single female, 20 to 30, with two part-time jobs and a comfortable income. She lives in New York City, stays connected through her tablets and mobile devices. She's also a registered user that's eager to download the latest apps and signs up for the alerts. And then we have Larry, the old school grandfather. He's a native of Hurricane Alley, married grandfather over 50 that earns a hefty pension. He has officially joined the online world but only accesses the internet from home. He is a registered user and he enjoys browsing for content and tracking the latest national storms. Our business objective is top of mind awareness in regards to forecast with the goal of increasing web signups. KPI, uh, this stands for key, key Performance Indicator. So these indicators help you understand how you're doing against your objectives. They're a direct reflection of your objectives, which makes them unique from company to company. And then you have your targets, which is a predetermined numerical value created for each KPI. It gauges your success or failure during analysis. So since top of mind awareness regarding forecasts is our objective, we want to track uh, key performance indicators. We want to see the number of weather.com action alert signups, number of app downloads, embedded weather forecasts to personalize web pages and blogs, and the number of individual memberships and registrations. For targets, we take our KPIs and give them values that reflect the online interaction we want to reach each month. So for the number of weather.com action alert signups per month, we want to see our goal of 18,000, our target of 18,000. App downloads, 10,000 embedded weather forecasts, 6,000 and individual registrations, 8,200. So here's a visual of what that looks like. You can see the action alert signups are dark blue and make up 43% of your monthly goals, 18,000 signups per month, while the embedded forecasts are in green and make up 14% of your monthly goals at 6,000 per month. So David the broadcaster would likely navigate this site by coming here and typing in the zip code of a Midwest city that he lives in. He'll check out the forecast, he'll refresh it many times a day, and he will also sign up for any breaking news alerts. Now Sarah, the tech savvy college student, she's definitely a registered user, so she's going to sign in. And she's also going to head down here to the bottom and she's going to look at 
uh, mobile products and she's gonna look at all of the different downloads and apps she's gonna um, get something embedded on her website on her phone and probably on her desktop as well um, for Larry the old school grandfather he is a registered user so he's gonna sign in um, and then he's also once he signs in he's gonna look at um, the latest storms that's going on and he's gonna track those storms as well for part two of this presentation, we're going to look at three separate tools that I recommend using in order to track analytics for weather.com. I'm going to show you how to use them for our site and we'll look at the things they have in common as well as what makes them unique. First, we're going to take a look at Get Clicky. Uh, Get Clicky allows for real time analytics and one click segmentation. It's also easy to understand and quite affordable. As you can see with Get Clicky, they have a very easy to navigate dashboard. You can see your visitors. Um, if you expand on your actions, you can see your app downloads. You can also see your video views. Um, you can look at uh, your campaigns and see what's going on there. You can track your social media over here. You can look at your engagement and uh, view your actions there. You can look at your links. Um, you also get to see your geographic location over here, your traffic sources down here. And if you scroll back up, um, obviously everything goes into detail up here on the dashboard. But what's really neat is that you can uh, look at your goals and see you know, which goals are completed. You can see the conversions, the revenue and things like that. So Get Clicky is a very easy to use tool um, that's quite affordable. Next up is Core Metrics. Um, I did request a demo but I have not received any response from them. Core Metrics provides a nice summary snapshot of your overall site traffic. It shows how metrics and site interaction can determine if your KPI targets are met uh, the stats are all in real time, so that allows you to add notes directly into the interface as well. You can see what your visitors are doing while they're on your site. You can find out what they're searching for and where they're leaving so that you can fill in the content gaps to keep them there. Um, Core Metrics also provides detailed video reports of viewing habits, which allows you to post the videos your audience really wants to see. And they can track social network activity with key terms. So this lets you see what topics are trending so that you can generate relevant weather content that your audience wants. It's an overall great tool to track targets, uh, action alert signups, app downloads, embedded weather forecasts, and of course individual registration. Adobe Analytics, formerly known as Site Catalyst and Omniture, is customizable. They provide a ton of information to analyze and measure against. Um, it gives you the option to create custom traffic, event, and conversion variables that give specific information about your visitors. You can actually see the click-throughs on a campaign versus the visitors who purchase the product. Adobe Analytics allows up to 75 traffic variables, 100 event variables, and 75 conversion variables that basically can capture any data you want it to. So the sky's the limit with this tool. It's a, more comprehensive than what we need it to be for the purposes of weather.com. So for the similarities and differences in terms of features, um, pretty much all three have customizable dashboards, social media monitoring, mobile browser monitoring, real-time data, and campaign tracking. Adobe Analytics doesn't have bounce rate, but that's not terribly important because most of our users leave the landing page fairly quickly anyways. Get Clicky doesn't have campaign ROIs or conversions, but between the other two, we can get what we need. Uh, the, for the traffic stats, all three have page views, unique visitors, visit history, entry and exit pages, exit links, events per page and visit, and time spent on site. Get Clicky, however, does not provide time spent on page, um, average visits per day, or popular pages, or visitor path. As far as referrals go, all three provide referring domains, referring search engines, search keywords and phrases. Get Clicky doesn't provide any internal referrers, which basically means we wouldn't be able to see which search terms were entered by users visiting our site. In terms of events, all three provide click-throughs, downloads, and flash events. However, Get Clicky doesn't provide multimedia streams, error pages, bookmark stats, or RSS feed subscri subscriptions, which could potentially hurt us in the end. 
Um, as far as visitors go, all three provide browser information, JavaScript, IP address, name of organization, country, state, city, and language, but GetClicky does not provide cookies, ISP, or a time zone, and Adobe Analytics doesn't provide username. So for a conclusion and final recommendation, um, basically it comes down to this. Affordable isn't always better. In my opinion, with analytic tools, you get what you pay for. So as we've seen, while GetClicky does have many great features, they also lack some vital ones that could be harmful in the long run. So while Adobe Analytics allows for customization and unlimited metric tracking, it can be confusing to set up. You'll likely end up spending more out of pocket to have someone do this for you. So my final recommendation on analytic tools for weather.com is Core Metrics. They offer, in my opinion, the best customizable metrics available in real time. Um, and they easily allow us to track action alert signups, app downloads, embedded weather forecasts, and individual registration. They're able to track mobile browser monitoring, campaigns, conversions, detailed traffic stats, referrals, and visitor details. And all of these features are necessary for monitoring our site. And Core Metrics makes it very easy to understand. Thank you very much.